Okay, so now I'm inside the tent, which you saw me put up. Now, I've got the the outer portion of the tent, well, let's call it the main part of the tent, as tight as possible. You can see by those straps that go either side. They are taut. It's a shame that they, I don't know, I guess Kaya must have designed it this way, where if the ground sheet doesn't come to the edge, you can see down there, there's no mattress on this side, that's why it's up in here a little bit. That's tight. This one here, I haven't managed to do that, but I'd have to put yet another peg to almost overlap at this, this point, which just becomes a pain in the ass. Initially I was thinking, well, if I sort of folded this, because it's pegged down so I can't pull it in, but if I brought the sides in, great. So I could bring this to, you know, to this point as it were. But then the trouble is the rear of the tent, I would have to actually machine that, uh, which I'm obviously not going to do. As there's about four inches roughly overlap which I suppose if it's pouring down a rain it means the ground sheet doesn't get wet I guess that's why it's been done like that okay. this little gap here especially if it's a bit loose you're in the middle of the night you're sleeping and you think to yourself oh some creature bloody crept in there's uh, something in investigating and going to claw its way through this this inner sanctum and attack me. Yeah, I know I'm being a bit paranoid maybe, but let me up. I'm, I'm tempted to put an extension, like a piece of material that comes to that point where my fingers is with some, some Velcro and then I can attach that on the inside and attach it when I need to fold the tent away and then the ground sheet separately. But basically, I don't know, so it feels more secure. I think we've all been there, that feeling of, like I say, in a tent, you're in the wilds, and you think, what the, f is that noise going on outside? Is that outside the tent, or have they, whatever it is, has it got inside the this portion of the tent? Okay, next problem. Now, this is the sleeping quarters. And this is, you can see that there, just, just under six foot long. And if you look at the space in the, let's call it the cabin, you've got approximately six foot. But, now with this mattress, I'm 178, five foot ten and a half, and I tend to sleep face down. Uh, my feet, or my toes, just go down over the edge of the mattress. Now on this mattress, it's okay. My head's pretty much, when this is closed, almost touching this end of the, the cabin and my feet are definitely touching so it's almost made for average height human beings and below i'm intrigued how phil six foot four manages to unless he sleeps diagonally across of course but i'll show you in a second when i have this self-inflating mattress which is far shallower than this and it causes my toes to curl up at the end, not in a good way. Well, not in a bad way, just an uncomfortable way. I'll show you. Okay, change the mattress. You can see which one this is. Others are available, obviously. Now that is against the end of the cabin and against the head of the cabin. Now, I'm gonna try and place the video so that you can see just what I mean. And now I don't think this cabin is big enough. All right, now, hopefully the video camera on my trusted iPhone won't move. Okay, so this is me. Okay, lying on my back. Touching the end, not a problem, but I don't sleep on my back. Now, well, in fact, look, you can see how, and it is mounted correctly, exactly as per the instructions, you know, it's, there's not 
a dip in the ground so in effect the sides of the tent are higher and that this is this is not in a hollow now if I lie on my front and I've got my head up against the uh, the top of the cabin so now I'm actually my toes, it's almost like he's trying to push my toes into my feet which is it's, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's just uncomfortable really so if I were to use this mattress I'd either have to put it diagonally or well, I don't want to sleep off it that's just silly but you see what I mean so I'm fascinated by how anybody taller than me with your typical self-inflating mattress as this is can manage in, in this cabin it, it's it does seem to be built for people who are well I guess I'm average height just under 5'11 or below okay I just want to have this is with a third mattress looking at this supposed 2.1 meters so 2 meters 10 centimeters of the cabin length and as you can see hopefully you can see the the cabin has been really held off the ground there and i'll show you why because if i open this up i now have a a third mattress this is a self-inflating one that's there you go Berghouse. you can hopefully see it's against the far end down there and this is pushing against the head of the cabin even more so when I do it up and it's tight now this bird house is two meters and four centimeters long okay the cabin is meant to be two meters and ten centimeters long so Kayam Sorry, I, I don't mean to offend, but somebody was on drugs when they measured this. I should have six centimeters spare. And of course, if I, if I put the weight down, so say if there's somebody on here, and then, see, I, I'm really sort of pulling the cabin down, stretching it to my mind. I know that's elastic, but I'm a little bit, dubious about yeah it's just I don't know I'm just I'm really not comfortable with the fact that I read in very clear picture form that it's 2.1 meters long and it very obviously isn't if you had it saying it was 1.8 meters long and most people will go oh great six foot that's brilliant and then they got the tent and measured it and went hey actually i can get 1.9 meters in here they'd be happy but when you're saying 2.1 and it's it is definitely not 2.1 then uh, it just kind of leaves people a little bit well well like me i guess perturbed so tape measure to the end you can see it pushing against the end and here so 2.1 is where my thumb is oh, well hold on a minute the, the cabin is meant to come to here so why is this what does that say two meters at a stretch like i say this mattress is two meters and four centimeters you can see by the creases it's it's being pushed in a little so it's not even being allowed to expand fully and bearing in mind this is a self-inflating mattress which is what most people use then you unroll the mattress when you get to your campsite open the valve down here and it inflates naturally it's realistically you might say 10 minutes probably give it a couple of hours you know go in do whatever you're doing on your campsite and then come back and it should have expanded but of course this one won't have expanded as you can see because it's constrained by the cabin that is most definitely not 2.1 meters long so the mattress never fully expands well sorry but um oh, sorry, i nearly blamed the mattress manufacturer then 
Sorry, Kayam, but somebody has got that figure wrong. And that means I've now got to change the... Well, in fact, this is the third one you've seen, and all of them are of some kind of issue because the cabin is just not the size that you're telling me. Okay, one other thing. I mean, this is kind of by the by, really. Most tents you can't stand up in unless they're a big family tent. But again, 178, 510 and a half in, uh, as they put it, stockinged feet. Ignore the belly. And I'm right in the centre, just about, well, you can see I'm actually touching. So it wouldn't be uncomfortable, I can stand and get dressed. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, by the way, Phil, definitely not having a dig. I'm just fascinated how someone's six foot four, my cousin is six foot four, and he's tries standing in this and he's like he's like like this you know just trying to he, he can't so i'm I, i'm just curious but like i say that's by the by i bought this tent because i could stand up in it or can stand up in it it's okay i'm sort of contained to the middle my previous one or my other one that i was using is a wigwam style and although that's taller because of the central pole you're just constantly sort of between the pole and the, the the sides of the tent that just became annoying whereas this okay my head is brushing against it doesn't matter because the design means that's always going to be dry and i have slept in it admittedly in my garden just to test but i have slept uh it's quite warm now june 2020 it's uh, really hot nights and zero condensation so no no faulting there i just am curious when somebody really talks says, oh, I can stand up in it. I'm like, how? <laughs> anyway, cheers. Okay, one other thing or one last thing. Well, you might hear the thunder in the background that I want to show. I'm not being overly critical of Kyle. I think they make an excellent product. But I, I don't understand this aspect of it. You've got this phenomenal, I guess, painted Kyle in particular pop-up design, like a almost like an inside-out umbrella. Brilliant, love it. And yet this part is just like any other tent where you've got the poles that you have to put together, which I personally think are rubbish and, and I can't stand. Now I've, you may have noticed, like these bits of tape, just keeping those in place, these, these little clips clip on and off. But what I do, and I don't understand, because Kayam do make other tents with this front portion, with the, the like their patented pop-up bit or whatever they want to call it but for some reason and i don't see why they don't do it on here so i just take that that out now what i've discovered that i can do or i kind of thought even before i bought it i should be able to do this and if i couldn't have done it i was going to send the tent back so normally what you do what you're meant to do is take these apart and of course unthread the, uh, the, the, the poles but personally I, I, you know that sort of defeats the object of owning a Kayam. Ah, it just seems you're missing the trick there you know, a lovely easy put together peak design but for some reason release all of this now see this will all come in a little bit snug I do get that but what I'm attempting to do here oh shit <laughs> trust me to leave the bloody straps okay stay and just some velcro straps I've got so if I Put this together. If this works, I'll I'll do something else to make it uh, a better system. Let's call it. All oh, right. Okay. Just that's ah. There we go. I've just caught on one of those because, as you can see, all right, a little bit. Heath Robinson. No, I don't actually know who Heath Robinson is a bit. 
bit kind of makeshift, but yeah, now that's all together as one piece. I'll tell you what's also missing, I think, that would maybe aid the speediness. You see where you've got these, these grey feet, the ones that are pegged to the ground? When it's in this inverted umbrella position, okay, I think it would be nice, rather than just kind of holding that together, if it was like, a, I, I don't know, some, you see somewhere would just go clip, 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 a little thing to just hold these four together, so it doesn't, you can't, when you're putting it all away, you don't drop it and it splays out again. Okay, so that's the umbrella. You know, definitely hear the thunder coming. Right, and this is now my collection of the, uh, the what do you call this? Like the, the front, um, in fact, if I put that through that one, and uh, hopefully that Velcro strap will more inclined to stay on. See? All of that front collection of pole, was well, one pole obviously in, in the bits with the elastic in, we're all familiar with that, is meant to be taken out. And as you can see, I've got the umbrella stash there, I've got that stash there, so it's in line. Now, come on Kyam, isn't that far, far better? So that when I come to rolling it up, in theory, I shoot myself in the foot and it doesn't work. And that all, see that's all in there. But there you go. I'll put the strap around there to keep it together and put it in a bag. That's far easier. So there's an improvement. Mr. Kayam, Mrs. Kayam. That front pole, which you meant to take out and put separate, sod that. It can just stay there as one. And like I say, I've, I've folded it with that one piece quite a few times now and then when you unravel the tent it's just there ready to pop into place okay hopefully you'll get back in touch and go yeah we've done it some of you recognize these rock straps now most tents again not a dig directly at okay um, just come with oh, where is it oh there you go basically a shite piece of you know cut off material that's, that has, when you put it around the tent, has about that much to tie the bloody bow. Yeah, whatever that's happening. I'm not saying you need to have rock straps uh, supplied, but something decent to hold it together. How the bloody hell they, well, it must be a machine when they put these things in the factory and it comes out of the bag and you go, wow, that looks tidy. Yeah, like you're ever gonna get it like that again. Perfect. There you go. Oh, wrong way around. Sorry, Kayam. Biker Plus. Lovely tent. One or two shortcomings, but generally speaking, love it.